All right, hello everyone. This is Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, and this is the Atlanta FileMaker Developers Group, although I really think we've expanded past Atlanta at this point <laughs> by a good chunk um, with some of the people we have joining here. Everyone is welcome to join, whether or not you're in Atlanta. Uh, so please always come by. We meet on the first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, my name is David Neidel from Blue Feather, and I'm going to be presenting a new free open source package uh, that we just released on uh, for using FileMaker with Laravel. So let me start presenting here. Everyone should be able to see my screen. You guys have that okay? Yep. All right. So I want to start out with uh, the FileMaker database to take a look at that. So here we have a very basic FileMaker database. This is going to be a database of companies and people. So mm -hmm. here I just have a company list. You can select company. Uh, you know, this is all just randomly generated data and um, also randomly generated people's faces, interestingly enough. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> these are from, um, uh, this person does not exist. So these are literally randomly generated people, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, what, what, what that tool do you use for that? Um, this, there's this website, it's called like this person does not exist.com and it makes fake people. Oh, wow. So these are all non existent, randomly generated, mm. you know, like AI generated uh, people's faces, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so we have companies and companies have contacts, or maybe we can call this, you know, people, right, at this company. And we can select the company. There's not a lot of information about the company, just the company name and their domain. And we've got 200 companies. I've only set profiles in the first company just because that's what we're going to use for, for demoing here. Um, but we can select any of these people and we can see a profile picture and their name and birthday, phone number, email, title, that sort of thing, and the company that they belong to. So this is this is pretty basic, nothing too exciting here, yeah. right? Um, and we want to connect this to a web application. Now, I've mm -hmm. built a web application already in Laravel, and I'll just show that right here really quick. Now, this isn't doing anything. This is just a static set of pages that I just mm -hmm. prepared for this meeting so that we can um, uh, you know, get an idea of what, what this is supposed to be and don't have to spend like a whole bunch of time writing out HTML. So this is just some template you know, uh, uh, lists and things like that. So just like the web application, we're going to have companies and people. Uh, here we have companies. I just have one company that I've put in here. This is just a hard-coded value. We have Blue Feather. I can click on this company. We see the company name and the domain here. And there's one contact, which is me. Uh, we can click on me. There's my profile picture. And this is all just this is all hard-coded stuff, just in static HTML, um, where we have you know a person's details here. Uh, you know, name, email address, phone number, things like that. I can go to, just like in FileMaker, I can go to a, a person list with only one person in it. Again, this is a hard-coded list. And uh, company is just one company in here. So similar things in here. We have company details, company list, people. I can make a person list view as well in here, but you know, this is just our source database that we're using as an example in this case. Uh, so we have this and we want to connect now this web application to our FileMaker database. Now this web application is a Laravel web application, uh, and I've just you know I've just started this and prepared this. There's not a lot to it. The only things that I've done for this so far are just connect um, you know Tailwind as a CSS framework, built a couple of views uh, in the let's see here we go to resources view. So here are the layouts that we're looking at. You know company detail, company list, person detail, person list, the stuff that you just saw, uh, just to save us time during this presentation, not actually have to build all of these things. But there, I mean, there's not anything fancy in here. Literally just copy and paste some some templates and uh, that's how we, we get to this, this view. Um, there are two controllers already set up, a company controller with an index and a get for a list view and a detail view. And we set up the web routes uh, just to say, you know, companies, company ID, people, person ID. Uh, this is just a super, super basic setup uh, in Laravel just to get us prepped and ready to go and start integrating things here. This, this isn't actually doing anything so far, but if I pick one of these companies, essentially we'll be able to pick a company by the ID, like company one, company two. This all returns exactly the same thing because it's all just hard coded in here right now. <laughs> these uh, these don't, really, don't really do anything for it. 
So let's see what we need to do now if we want to connect this application and actually get our data from the FileMaker database. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is back in our FileMaker database, we need to make some layouts that the data API is going to use. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go here and make a new layout. Here's our layout view. I'm going to, you know, if we were working real FileMaker solution, we'd have lots of layouts. Right now there's only three in here. Um, yeah. But we're going to make a, a company view, a company layout that the data API is going to use, and a person layout. Um, so I'm going to call this one Dappy Companies, like this. And this is where our, our data API is going to pull the company data. And I'm going to make a new one here called Dappy People. And this is going to be based on person. And these names are actually important, and I'm going to show you some things about them in a little bit. Um, you can name them whatever you want, uh, but for things like for data API web applications, I like to give all my layouts a, a prefix to um, to help distinguish them from just like a person list view or detail view. Uh, so I'm going to put this one on here too. So now we have these two new layouts, Dappy Companies and Dappy People. You know, Dappy is for data API. So let's go to companies and like normal, we have to put our fields on the layout. So I've got all these fields in here. And let's put, this is just kind of this company. All right, and save that. And then we'll go to people and do the same thing here. I'm gonna put all the people fields on the layout. And just call this one person, oops. So we can keep track of this person. All right, now I have already created the account that we're going to use for this database. Um, the credentials for it is just a username and password demo. Um, but if we go here and take a look here, manage security, uh, we have this demo privilege set, or sorry, this demo user and data entry only. And the privilege set has been given the uh, access via FileMaker Data API extend privilege. So I'll just this is all standard normal stuff so far, so far just to get us set up uh, and ready to go here. With this set up, we can now start the process of connecting our web application to the FileMaker database. So the first thing we need to do, uh, Laravel it uses Composer. Many web app or many PHP applications use this. Composer is a PHP package manager. Um, and I'm going to run the command here. I'm just going to open up a little terminal window here, just below this, just to show you guys here. Uh, I'm going to use Composer to install the Bluefeather Eloquent FileMaker package. So I'm going to do uh, Composer require Bluefeather Eloquent FileMaker. And when I do this, it's going to go out to the web and get this package and download it and install it and do all the things that it needs to do. Uh, so there we go. Let's put it in here. That has worked and now it just popped up in here. So there we go. Using that, it added it to our composer.json as well. The latest version is 0.0.6. So this is early versions of this. Um, but this package is set up now and it's installed in this project and we're able to use it. Um, the next thing to do is go into our database configuration, and they, this is a standard Laravel thing. Normally you'd be connected to a MySQL database instead of MySQL, we're going to use FileMaker here. Uh, and we need to set up a new connection. So like, here are some sample MySQL connections. Um, we're going to add a FileMaker one in here. And I'm actually going to go to the, the website here and just copy and paste the database configuration from the GitHub documentation for this package. Um, this is the Bluefeather Group Eloquent FileMaker uh, on GitHub. So I'm just going to paste in an additional connection on here. This is just like all these other connections that have been set up in here already. I'm just adding a new one. We can name this whatever we want. I'm just going to call this connection uh, demo. And the important parts on here are the driver is FileMaker. Uh, these other values, the host database, username, password, prefix, version, protocol. Um, we actually don't even need these values, but I'll leave them in here for now. Uh, the these values are going to come from my environment. I could hard code them in here, but generally you don't want to put credentials right in your configuration, and maybe you have different configurations for production versus development. So I'm going to go into the env file for this project, all standard stuff here, and change the connection from the MySQL connection that was in there to the demo connection we just set up. Let's set up our host in here. Um, this is going to be fms.bluefeathergroup.com. 
uh, port we don't need to specify here. The database is, and because this has a space in it, so I'm going to put in quotes here, eloquent uh, demo. And the username is user, sorry, uh, demo. And the password is also demo. And we have an option of specifying a prefix. And if you remember before, I named my layouts with this very specific pattern and gave them a, a prefix of dappy dash, D-A-P-I dash. Uh, this prefix helps just put that in place automatically when I'm calling these, so I don't have to remember to like type dappy dash over and over and over again. So I'm gonna go dappy dash here as the prefix. So it's gonna just get appended on all of the layout names automatically from, from specifying this. Uh, so let's see here, I'll just move this away from now. All right, here's this one here. Okay, so we've configured uh, our database connection now. This is ready to go. Uh, the next thing we need to do is make our model classes, which, uh, it's a feature of Laravel to make these models in here. We can do this using Artisan. So I'm going to do Artisan make uh, model company. Oh, I already have this in my recently run things here for my practice. <laughs> uh, so we're going to make a company model. And I'm going to do the same thing for person. And it's going to make these two model classes. Now, this is the first thing we need to change in here. From company, instead of using model, we want to use the, the class that we've just uh, you know, the, the FM model class instead of model, which is the, the specific PHP class for this, that comes from this package that we want to use to make sure our connections and all the file maker features we want to use will work in here. So I'm going to change that from model to FM model. Uh, and then I'm going to just import that class and we can take out the other model class. I'm going to do the same thing on person. I'm going to make this FM model, import class, take out the other class. All right. Uh, these two classes have been set up now. Um, and that's it. We've actually done everything that we need to do uh, to make the connection to our FileMaker database. We don't have to do any more code. We can now retrieve, search for, and um, work with people and companies in this database. So that's it. That's how easy it is. <laughs> um, Let's see, I'm going to switch this over to another branch here. I'm going to do this as a demo, just so I'm work, not working on the main branch anymore. All right, uh, so these files have been created here. Uh, let's see them in use and see how we can actually use these things. Okay. So let's start by looking at a company. So I'm going to look at this company here, and this is company one, right? So we're this should be the ID, the primary key of the... Uh, the record in our database. So if we're looking at the FileMaker database, we look at company. Uh, company one here is uh, Wikibox. So when we're looking at company one, we should see Wikibox. When we look at company two, we should see Photo Bean. It's all randomly generated names and things. Uh, when we look at company three, Oyoyo, right? So these are the companies that mm -hmm. we should be seeing in these in these places here. So how can we make this happen? So back in our company uh, controller, we're going to be. Uh, we we look at the route that we have here. Let's look at the let's look at our uh, web.php right here. I'm going to close this. So this is our route files. When we're looking at company ID, I'm actually going to change this to company here to make this clear what we're dealing with. So we in our in our URL, it's going to start with company slash and then the company that we want to see. So company slash one and that matches here. That's what we want. So now I can go to my company controller. And it's calling this get method here. I'm gonna change this to company. And I'm gonna use Laravel's implicit uh, model binding to just say company, uh, space company. So Laravel is smart enough, this is a Laravel feature that we're able to use here to say that when we're getting a variable in here, it kind of figures out that this is supposed to be the primary key, it goes and finds that model for us and in injects it so that we will actually have a variable called company that is going to be the model of the company class that, uh, or of the company record um, that we created. So we have this company now. Um, the way we pass data to views in FileMaker is by a parameter to this view. So I'm gonna make a data view here, or data variable. This is gonna be an array. Um, 
we're going to have the property company be our company variable here. And let me just pass in this array as our second parameter on here. So now this is going to go and pass in the company data to our view. So let's take a look at the oops, uh, company detail view here. So here we go. We want to put the actual's company, the company's actual name and uh, address here. So here we're putting the company up in this title slot here. Instead of hard coding it in, I'm going to put in company name. And for the URL, I'm going to put in, uh, oops, sorry, you know what? This needs to be in curly braces like that. And then in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do company uh, domain because those are our field names in FileMaker, right? We have the company name right here, and the, oops, the domain is on the layout, that's right here. So these are the two values we wanna get, the company domain and the company name. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm gonna put this inside this A tag so we have a clickable link, clear that. Uh, company uh, domain, right there. And let's reload this page. Take a look at that. We now have the data from our FileMaker database here. Wikibox and the URL is printfriendly.com. And I can just change this number up here to, here's photo bean, three. Here's oyoyo, four, Jabbersphere. So that's it. We're getting the data from our FileMaker database that easily. Um, mm -hmm. Now what I've shown here is this is, this is the least amount of work required to get the data from your FileMaker database into Laravel, to have it create these models, to be able to uh, get the properties like this. Um, the reason this worked with so little configuration is because this class is able to take advantage of some of FileMaker's naming conventions. Um, we specified the prefix, so because we gave it that prefix, it knows the layout names that it's supposed to be getting. So it Laravel tries to pluralize your class names to get your uh, layout names. And so it was able to go from company to companies and from person to people to figure those things out automatically. Um, we're able to remap those if those names aren't as perfectly aligned as what we have here. Um, but you know, because we we're planning, we were able to set that and able to just take advantage of Laravel's um, default uh, naming options. Uh, let's do the same thing for person. So we're gonna go to person, person one. So here's me, this is the same thing hard coded in. Um, we're going to look at our person route here. So person ID, just to, for clarity, instead of calling ID here, I'm gonna say person. We're gonna use Laravel's um, uh, uh, implicit binding again to get the actual person model. Uh, and we're going to go to the person controller. Oops. Right here. And I'm just going to call this person, person. And we're going to do a very similar thing to what we just did a second ago. Data equals is going to be an array. Uh, person, person. Give that a semicolon. Import our class. Oops. There's our. There it is and pass in our data as our second parameter on here. And now when we go to our, our actual view, the uh, person detail, I can start replacing the values in here um, with the values from the database. So here where we have a picture of me, I don't want my picture in here, we want to get the, the, the container um, from our FileMaker database, because for our people, we have nice little photos for everyone here, right? So we can just get this container value. If the field name is photo, so I'm just gonna go person photo. Uh, for the name, I'm gonna do, what name do I want here? I want name underscore first underscore last underscore C, right, and that'll get us the full name here. So let me just put this here and replace this value. Person name first, last, C. Email, we'll do the same thing here. Person, email, and the company. Ah, so we'll, come, we'll, we'll, we'll 
come back to the company in just a second here. Um, but let me just fill in a couple of the values. Person, name, first, last, C, email, person, oops, person, email. All right, save that. Let's take a look at our web application. Already, this has got all the right data in this. We've got the person, name, email. We haven't done the company yet. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and here's their name and email address. You know, let's, let's, why not? Let's just put our phone number in here. Person, phone, and we will do the title as well. Person, title. All right, all the right data has now been populated in our database, and this is all coming directly from FileMaker, including the container data. Um, we're looking at person one in here. So let's just take a look at person one. There he is, VP marketing, phone numbers match, email name. All the data that we put in here is showing up directly from our FileMaker database and that's working correctly. Let's take a look at person two. Here's person two. And person three. directly from the FileMaker database. Now we'd probably want to add some caching in here so that it's not having to re-query this every time. Um, but, you know, super, super easy to to get the data into your Laravel web application and to get model objects, um, Laravel models from FileMaker objects. And you can see we had to do very minimal configuration to do this. So one of the advantages of using models in Laravel is they give you a whole lot of extra features on top of just having an object that you can get properties of. Um, <clears throat> we do have, you know, the ability to just to get this person name first last, which is nice. Um, but Laravel offers things like uh, accessors and mutators, um, so that you know, if we wanted to get this as uppercase, we could use Laravel's. Um, accessor property to uppercase this name. So let's take let's let's take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna use Laravel's accessors here. So public function get uh, name first last C value and this should be return I haven't tested this actually so we're gonna we're gonna see if this works here. Um, uh, str to upper value like this. Oops. Oh, attribute. Uh, I might have to. Uh, Uh oh, am I crashing here? No. Well, that should work, but I think I I think I messed something up in here. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, the the accessors uh, do work. Didn't it? Was this is this name first last? See, is that what that is? Name first last. See. Yeah. That should be working on here. <coughs> hmm. Anyway. Uh, oh, because I put it in the controller, not in the model. That's why. Duh. All right, let's put this in here. <coughs> there it is. So now we've, you know, we can, we get all of these features of models, like defining these accessors. Uh, to modify the value as we retrieve it from the database or as we put it in. In this case, I defined an accessor for this name first last C uh, field that just uppercases it all the time. So now anywhere where I'm using it, it'll always come back uppercased. So that's just a cool Laravel feature that we're able to support and use. I can take it off and then now anywhere that I'm using the name, let me just turn off the debugger on here. Um, anywhere I'm using the name now just goes back to whatever's in the database. So we just we just get all of these Laravel uh, features for models, which are really nice. Um, things like events on creation, on save, on delete. If you wanted to 
you know, delete some files. When a model is deleted, you're able to do that and, and use all of the Laravel features that you would expect um, because this is built around using just FileMaker as a database instead of Laravel for the models. So another really cool feature of Laravel models, which we're able to use here, are relationships. Um, we want to say that this person belongs to a company. Uh, and we want to get the company name here. So in our person model, just as with Lar regular Laravel things, we can say public function belongs to, oops, oh, sorry, no, public function uh, company. And we're going to say that a company is this uh, belongs to, and then we define the uh, class here. So we're going to say company class. And that is enough to establish the relationship between these people and the company that they belong to. So uh, let's take a look back at the person detail. Now where we want to show the company name, I can say here, person, oops, sorry, flip that up to another screen. Uh, so here we go. Here's where we're, we're specifying the, the company name. This said blue feather here. I'm going to change this to be person company. And I'll now get the related company record name and that is all I need to do oops uh, where did I Belongs to, right, person, belongs to, company. Oh, because I forgot to return it. All right, there we go. Yeah. All right, so now we're doing the person belongs to the company, and here it is, uh, Mita, right, whatever company that is. Um, but I can, let's get the, let's make the link work in here as well. I'm going to go back to here, and we want to get the person company ID. Let's fill that in. So now our link should work. If I click on this, it should take us to the Mita company. And here it is. Now we haven't updated this yet, so it still shows you know, my placeholder one here. Um, but for any of these companies now, we've, we've used the Laravel relationship um, uh, feature to define that relationship to say that the person belongs to a company. Now when we do this, it's figuring out, it's taking a guess at what the field names are. Uh, when we look at the person class, we're just, we're just saying it belongs to a company. It's guessing that because we're saying it's company, that the foreign key on our person table is going to be person underscore, sorry, it's going to be company underscore ID, which it is. If we look back in the FileMaker database, you know, we've named this conveniently so that it's able to figure this out. Uh, it's company underscore ID in the person table that defines our foreign key to say which company this person belongs to. But if we had a different name, we could specify that here. Uh, just This is just regular uh, Laravel functionality. We can say, you know, in this case, we want to specify it, but it's going to be company ID. That's the right value. If it was something else, we could specify something else. Um, but that still is what we need to establish the relationship. So we can change that if we've called it ID underscore company or company ID with no underscore, whatever. Um, we can specify whatever we need in here. I'm going to take it out just because we're keeping this as simple as possible and it still works without it. So here we go. Here's Mini. Uh, Mini is very masculine for such a feminine name, I think, but you know, <laughs> that's who we've got. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all working. Let's take a look at some other things that this supports that we can work with on here. So if we want to look at this company list. Now we've got a database of, uh, how many companies do we have in here? 200 companies? So we've got 200 companies in this list. We probably don't want to list all 200 companies. We'll start yeah. We'll start with 200, but we'll, we'll, we'll need to cut this down pretty quickly. Uh, so for our web routes, let's see where we're going. So for companies, we're going to the company controller index method. So let's go to company controller index and we want to view the list of the companies here. We need to get the companies. Now, <clears throat> how do we get the companies? Before we were just using Laravel's um, implicit binding feature to get the right model 
for the individual company we want to look at. But here we want to actually just get the companies from the database as an object that we can work with. So I'm going to say companies equals, and then just like with a regular Laravel query builder, I can say company uh, all. And this is going to return all the companies. I'm mm -hmm. going to add our data equals companies, uh, companies, all right, just pass all this in here. And then, so I'm just passing the data that we, oops, no, sorry, data. I'm passing the data that we've collected. This should be all the companies. It's gonna pass it into our data array with the property companies so that's available with the same variable name, nice and convenient. Um, pass it to our view of the company list. Let's take a look at what that company list is. So company list, here it is. Um, so for each company, we want to add a row onto this table so that they're all listed out. So I'm gonna go in here and let's do this. I'm gonna do for each companies as company and uh, we want to do the company, this link is the company ID. We want here the company name. Oops. There's a the company name. And we want the domain right here. Company domain. And we're going to do the same thing in the actual link so we get taken to the right web page. Uh, and then we'll put the end for each right down here. And let's take a look. Save it, it's reloading, there it is. Here mm. are all of the companies, all 200 of them um, from the database. Now this is kind of a, kind of a long list. I probably <laughs> wouldn't want to show this to people and have to pull this from the database every time, right? This is more than someone can really handle here. Uh, let's paginate it. Okay. So we're going to okay. use Laravel's paginate feature, which with the, which this package also supports. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the company controller. Instead of doing companies all, we're going to do paginate 10. And then we're going to go back to the company list. And let's find this here. We're going to do, uh, I'm just going to B5, add a little margin on the bottom of this thing. Um, add down below this. Uh, companies links put this right here hit save and now here we go hey. 10 companies with pagination mm -hmm. I can flip through them all here all the way up to 20 to get whatever companies that we're looking for and if we click on here now if I click on Wikibox it's going to take us to the Wikibox details page uh, and we've set this up now the only thing we've set up on this is the uh, you know the name and the URL here, but I can I can click here. I can go yeah. to printfriendly.com. I mean it's a real website, I guess. Uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> but this is all working, and we're getting the data from our FileMaker database really easily. So let's fix. Mm -hmm. Let's do this relationship now. Each company has many related um, uh, people, right? So we can. Oh. Our, this is going to be supported if we go to our company model here, we're going to do public function, oops, people return this has many uh, person class here like that. And now when we when we get our company, if we need people, we're, this is all we need to do to get the related people to this company. Just like with the other uh, package, it figures out the names of the primary keys and the foreign keys. It'll do the search for you automatically. Uh, let's go back to our company detail. We want to list all of these people down here in the company contact section. So down here for each row, I'm going to do the same thing for, oops, for each uh, company uh, people as person. And we're going to get the person's profile picture right here. So person photo and we want here the person name and here's the email address person email uh, and we'll do oops <coughs> person phone and person 
Title. Save. Uh-oh. Oh, I forgot the end if on here. Let me add that in. Oh, why is my mouse stopping work? Oh, because my phone is next to my mouse. Let me move that. All right. <laughs> here we go. End, uh, end for each. And here we go. Here are the people at Wikibox. Wow, that's great. That's great. So we're pulling all that from uh, from the database. Did I get too many people here? Yeah. Hold on a second. Did I? Uh... I may be getting too many people. Hmm. I'll have to look in this. There's a reason this is 0 .0 0.0.6. I think this is too many people. Um, I've got to correct that, I think. How many people are there? Oh, there's a bunch of people here. Some, uh, yeah, we've got we've got too many people. All right, I'm going to have to adjust that, but uh, yeah, that is the that is the the syntax for that, and it looks like I just need. Working on it shortly before the demo here. Um, that would get the related people. Anyway, from this we should be able to go to the person. Uh, where's our link? We want to go to the person's name here. So let's go person ID. Oops, and uh, let me. Oh, it's because I put this in parentheses twice. Clear that out. Don't need all that. All right. So if I click on this person here, it should take me to Mike Cronin. Great. If I click on this person here, oh, did I put their e email in the name field? Oh, no, I just need name, name first, last, C. There we go. It was just missing. There we are. Names and email yeah. addresses. Uh, let's click on Mini. She looks great. Mm. Alicia, perfect. Mabel, <laughs> awesome. So look, we've just we've just set up all these links. Our data is all linked. We can go back to the companies. Um, yeah, I've got to fix this. Uh, this has many relationships. Is having an issue here. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we've we've got this out. We've got the links. We've got the people. We've got the relationships all set up, <clears throat> and this is all working. Uh, now, this isn't the end of this. We support all of the features that you would need through the data API. So, uh, do you support the scripts and everything? Yep, yep. So you can do all of that. So if we wanted to run a script in here, let's make a script that uh, we want to run. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make a. Let's take these off. Uh, let's run a script here that's going to be create. Uh, what do we want to call this? Like create company. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're going to go to go to layout. We'll go to the company detail, new record, set field. Um, we want the name to be whatever we specify in our parameters. So I'm going to say get script parameter, and then we'll just commit, and that'll be the end of that. So that seems good, right? We're going to make a new company and just set the name to be whatever our script parameter is going to be. So let's use that here. So we're going to list these companies um, on this index page. Uh, let's actually make a new. Let's make a new. Um, no, I don't want to do that now. I'm just going to. We'll just. We'll just call this uh, on the get. Every time we load it. Every time we look at a company, we're going to create a new company by calling this script. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to say here we're going to use this fm facade. Uh, and then we're going to go to, uh, we're going to say layout, because we have to specify the layout we want to use this on. So this is going to be companies, script, and our script name, which is, uh, what is this, create company? Uh, create company. And we're going to give it a parameter, uh, param, which is going to be my demo company. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to say execute or perform script like that. 
save that. So when I reload the page, we should. Uh oh, app class. Oh, because I have to. Let's just, let's just, I'll just import this here. And if I have to spell things correctly, layout, all right. Parameter. Script param. Well, I forgot what it's called. There we go. Okay. Script param my demo company. So we've we've we called this here, so we're just going to FileMaker, layout companies, run this script with the script parameter, my demo company, perform script. Let's take a look if we have a two hundred and first company we do with the name yeah. my demo company. Yeah. Uh, now, this isn't the only way to do this because we can just create companies. Um, we, we ran a script to do it in this case, just to test it, but I'm going to delete this. And let's make a new company uh, instead, of, instead of calling the script here. Oops. Uh, so commenting that out. All right, so we're going to use Laravel's native functionality for doing this and say, uh, let's do company equals company uh, uh, sorry we want to do new company and when we do this we're creating a new company model which is not saved in the database yet but I can start writing those properties right here so I can say company name equals uh, you know just created name and the company domain equals mycooldomain.com. And then I want to save this. So I'm going to do company save just, and this is, this is the native Laravel syntax for doing this sort of thing. So I'm going to call company save here. This is going to save it to the database. And then we're going to have company down here. We've, so every page now is going to create a new company with this name. Um, but we should be seeing this this company's name here. So let me let me reload this, and here's our just create just create name and mycooldomain.com. We should have a new record in the FileMaker database as well. There it is. Just create. This should be just created. Right. Um, let's reload that. We're gonna make another one. All right. Now we have another new record. There it is uh, with our domain on here. So it's that easy to get and modify these records uh, from anything that we've retrieved on here if we're retrieving one like we're getting company passed in if we don't make a new company in here what's going to happen is we're going to retrieve the one from the database and then change the name so let's look at uh, whoops I just modified one here but let's look at 203 so this is going to be the this is the original name and original company dot org right for 203 mm -hmm. Um, because I've changed this now, we're reading the company and setting these values and saving it. We're going to be editing that record in FileMaker. So let's go to 203, pull up the FileMaker database here just so we can see this change. Uh, here's 203, the original name. We're going to yeah. go to 203. And... Oops, we saving it in here? Am I looking at the right one? Oh, it was on 204. That's why. <laughs> Record 203 because I deleted one. ID 204. Here we go. There it is. So we just modified it in the FileMaker database as well, just by getting the model, setting the properties, and hitting save. Now, this will also mm -hmm. work for container data and portals if you put portals on your layout. So you can modify, you can retrieve your portals and modify portal data um, using the same set of options on here uh, just by setting the properties on this. Now portal data, because of the arrays, you actually have to retrieve it, make a copy of the whole thing, set your values, and then write it back. Um, but it's smart enough to only write the fields which you've changed, uh, even if someone else has retrieved it since you've last, um, sorry, if someone else has edited since you've last retrieved it. You can set the mod IDs on here. Uh, if you want to catch that when we're doing the save, we can do you know mod ID. Um, and set that to our current mod ID if we want to make sure that we're no one's modified it since we've worked it. We can uh, do the um, 
you know, the pre pre request scripts, the post request scripts, the sorting pre request sort, post request sort, all those things are all supported in here. Uh, same thing for when retrieving this. Um, we can specify sort options on here. So if we want to do like paginate 10, let's do order by uh, name. All right, so when we're getting our company lists, mm -hmm. we want them sorted by name. We use order by name here. Uh, let's take a look at our company list. Now they're all in order. Yeah. Um, so we support all of these FileMaker query, sorry, these eloquent query builders that you would expect from a Laravel application um, for everything that makes sense. Um, we do mins and maxes as well. That's supported in here, but some things like sums, you can't really do that with a query. You'd have to make a summary field in FileMaker to get that. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. those kind of things aren't going to work. Um, mm. But for things that make sense in the context of FileMaker, uh, you can do that. Uh, same thing for like containers. You can set just, you know, we have a property on here, photos. Um, if we want to set a photo, uh, let's go to a person. We can set, uh, where is our person controller here? When we're getting a person, let's make a new person. Uh, let's just say here, new person equals new person, right? And then we're going to say, new person name equals, I'll put my name in here, uh, David. Actually, it's name first, I think, is the name of the field. And let's say new person photo uh, is equal to, and we're going to use our asset, because um, I have a file in here of my profile already, asset, we go image, um, image david.jpg, there it is. And then we're going to save this new person. So when we load a person now, because I've just put this on the, the get a single person uh, view here. Uh, when we load a person, it's going to create a new person in the database. Let's go back to our FileMaker database and take a look at people. So we've got a thousand people in here right now. We're going to create a new person and we should have my picture in one of these containers on here. We have 1,001 now. Let's flip over. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, this needs to be new file. With <coughs> path. All right, let's delete that one. Delete, delete. Uh, storage path. Uh, oh, move this over. Pops, public path. No, uh -oh. what value is invalid here? Name first is that not the right field name? Name first. Photo, is that the right? Well, I'll have to double check and see what that is, uh, yeah. <coughs> the value we're not setting properly on here. That looks right to me. But anyway, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to test that. Let's just take that off. We'll just, yeah. anyway, that'll, it'll work again, point, you know, 0 0.0.6, 0 .0 but, uh, yeah, so we can create the records and set their values in here too. Let's just delete that, take that out of here. So all of these sorts of things will work. If you don't want to use um, the Eloquent Builder for any of these things for like getting the first 10 companies or searching for companies on a specific value. Like uh, if we wanted to, let's look, at our, let's look at our company list and let's do a search on here real quick. Company list, company controller. So order by name. Let's also do this um, where, oops. Oh, because I broke this now. Uh, let's search for some companies here. Let's say where, oh, we've got a bunch of bees. Mm -hmm. Look at all these bees. Uh, let's get yeah. only companies that start with B. Okay. Um, so we're going to say where name, and then we will do just like a FileMaker find here, we're going to say yeah. Uh, you know, B star. So let's save that. Here it is. And now we've got the companies 
in alphabetical order, descending by name, where the name starts with the P. So we've got B star, and now we're only at you know 30, or however many, 21 results here. Um, so again, this is just kind of standard eloquent, uh, you know, fluid, fluent query, query building uh, using an eloquent builder that is just built for FileMaker. Um, there is just a native, um, native style fluent builder as well you can use, and that's what I was showing before. If we use this FM facade, um, we can specify a table or layout for FileMaker, right? Uh, where we could say uh, companies. Uh, you know, where we can do the same thing over say where just say where name get and that would get us all the companies that start with uh, that start with B. They're not gonna be models. Oops. ID <coughs> Oh, because there's no, yeah, it's trying to render the company ID and that doesn't exist here. Um, but let's take a look what we got back from the query if I put the debugger on. Uh, oh, it's not like it now. All right, we'll just take that <coughs> out because I don't want to update the layout. We're just using the eloquent side of things for right now. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so very easy to perform our finds, get the values we want. Um, we can find by ID if we wanted to get a single company. Um, you know, rather than doing the injection in here, we could take the company ID as a parameter and write it as uh, company equals company find you know ID if we had the ID in here as let's say ID is one um, you know we will be getting when this runs this is going to be finding I gotta take some of these breakpoints off company ID equals one company if we look at the debugger down here um, oops we're going in too far let me turn off my breakpoint. Sorry about this. Okay. Our company is, if we look down here, we should be able to see the company attributes. Here we go. This is company one, uh, mycooldomain.com. Is that the right one in here? <coughs> company detail, company one. Yep, mycooldomain.com. That's our first company. Uh, so we're able to, you know, just do just find by primary key if we want and get that single company back and it loads up here and there it is I'm gonna take this out so we're back to the correct one um, but it's that easy to get your FileMaker data to make changes to it save it update your properties and you still get all of the features of FileMaker sorry of um, Laravel's <coughs> models uh, like the notifications, the mutators, the accessors, relationships, um, the query builder, and uh, if you're used to working with Laravel, this makes it really easy to get to uh, your FileMaker data. Excellent. So, 8 o'clock, that's it. My time is up. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Uh, let's see here. Our, I just want to pull up the, so the, the package for this, if you go to GitHub, uh, it is Eloquent FileMaker here. Blue Feather Group Eloquent FileMaker. The package is just Blue Feather Eloquent FileMaker. Um, we've got the documentation for how to set it up on here okay. to get it into your uh, Laravel application. Um, now, uh, one other, so a couple other cool things that I'm just going to mention very quickly. Uh, sometimes in FileMaker you have inconveniently named fields, things that won't work well in a mm -hmm. web application, like names with spaces and things like this. This actually supports remapping your field names. Okay. Um, so if I go into my FileMaker database and for my contact, if instead of having name first, right, let's call this, or so instead of name first last, let's call this full name with a space in it. Like that is an inconvenient name for us to deal with. Um, if I go and look at a person on here now, this is just, it doesn't find it. It can't, there's no field with that name. We're not getting the person's name in here at all anymore. Um, uh, I I can't really even type that out well because it's got that space in here. But I can add a field mapping property and remap uh, f oops, full name to be 
if I want to call this name full in here, maybe this is a more convenient name for me to use, all of these fields will now go through and use uh, name full, which is what I just set here. So I'm going to say name full. Oops. And his name is back. So even though it is a very inconvenient name in FileMaker, we're able to just remap it by setting a single property in the person model to remap the FileMaker name to the name we want to use for this attribute in our web application. That'll work. That'll be easier for us to deal with. Um, this also supports casting from uh, from timestamps and dates. Uh, just like native Laravel. So if you have creation timestamps, modification timestamps, you want to read those values, you'll get those as carbon date time objects. Um, and uh, those that makes it really easy to work with dates and write out your dates in whatever format you want. Uh, we can add that with a casts method on here. This is just native, similar native Laravel functionality that we support on here. Uh, protected uh, casts, All right, And then we can list the fields that we want to cast to be um, dates or uh, timestamps. Um, uh, if you if your table doesn't match, your layout name doesn't match what it's guessing. So like it's guessing people in this case, it's guessing that the layout name should be dappy dash because I put the prefix in people. <coughs> but if that's not right, just like native uh, Laravel, you can go protected uh, table equals. You know, if I called it dappy dash person instead, I could say person here. Or actually, because this is FileMaker, this will actually work if you specify layout. That'll also work. Does the same thing. Uh, just like the relationships, if something doesn't work, you can just override it to get your value that you're using in there. And if your field names are really hard to use, like with spaces in them, you can even just remap the field names entirely, and you'll just won't have to deal with the FileMaker fields at all. This yeah. is also kind of convenient. If someone changes the name, you just change it in one spot, and then it's updated, and your, your app comes back and starts working again. Um, so it helps make it more resilient if you do the field mapping as well. Um, anything else I want to mention before we go? Uh, let's see here. Field mapping. So we've got the base query builder and the FM facade. So we can do queries just like what we demoed before. Um, run scripts. You can set here are all the different things you can do. Limits, offsets. Set scripts, script parameters, pre-sorts, pre-sort parameters, pre-request, pre-request parameter scripts, layout response. If you want to get a different, if you want to get your data from a different layout than the one that you would normally get it from for a model, you can do that, and it'll use the new set of fields. Uh, if you want portals, it'll automatically take all portals by default, but you can specify individual portals. You can pro you can um, do where's and or where's if you want to do combined multiple find requests in a single perform find that'll work and you can also specify things to be omitted just like you'd be able to in FileMaker. Um, when you're writing values back you specify field data and portal data if you're using the base query builder because the native models will just handle this for you automatically so you don't have to worry about specifying field data and portal data. Um, set containers again if you're using the base query builder otherwise you just set the property with the file that you want it to be and it'll write it into the database. Um, so that's about it. We covered a lot, a little over an hour here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> any questions? I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's very straightforward. You know, I just wanted to let you know, like, uh, if uh, if uh, the other people from other FileMaker uh, groups, uh, do you want me to uh, let them know about these meetings every, you know, every month? Yeah, definitely do. Share this yeah, with everyone, you know, because everyone can join wherever they are. Um, yeah. We're all meeting online, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, the more people we have in here, the better. Okay, yeah, because, you know, there are, for my presentation, I didn't tell anybody because I, I wanted to ask you first. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's welcome, always. Okay, good. Good, I'm going to let you know. Great. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Okay. I'll applause here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, we're looking for ideas for our presentation for next month. So okay. uh, if you have something that you'd like to see, send me an email, david at bluefeathergroup.com. Or if you have something that you'd like to present, also email me, david at bluefeathergroup.com. Let me know what you'd like to see or what you're interested in sharing. Um, and we will invite everyone and, uh, and, and hopefully have a good time. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.